Hey everybody, Big J Anderson Mountain View Farms. Love the camera, say hey. Hi. Now today, talk about painting. As you can see, this room we are painting toward, toward the end of the day. It's already been primed. I'm doing uh, two coats of uh, gloss paint on the um, on the frames of everything. So, but what I want to talk about today is some initial stuff. How to properly load the paintbrush and how to actually hold the paintbrush. Seems simple, but most people really don't know that much about how to paint and paint well. I did work with the professional painters uh, a number of years ago, learned a lot from them, and um, so hopefully I can pass some of those tips on to you, something I've kind of developed and honed in on myself over time. Now the first thing is, uh, this paint can, as you can see, uh, just I call this my work pot. It's not that full, maybe about a quarter of the way, maybe an eighth. Uh, you don't want to have it too full. You don't want to load the paintbrush where it's all full of bristle. So just want to put it in here like so. And you can see that as I'm loading it here, kind of tap it on the side, a little bit more in there, take it upside down like this. I actually just cleaned it out recently. Sometimes when it gets too much goo in there, you have to kind of stop, uh, clean out your brush and start over. So, so you can see I don't have the paint all the way up. And once I'm painting for a while, it'll actually end up being probably about halfway on there. So that's the proper way, um, at least the way that I do it, to, to load the brush. Also, just holding the paint can. If you hold it just like this, um, you got your fingers here, got your thumb and your next finger here. It's just a good way to have complete control over it. You know where it is at any time. You're a lot less likely to spill something or be, have a big accident. I mean, I still have some stuff out on the floor, um, but generally that will prevent a lot of your action. Just hold it, loping down a ladder, whatever. It's a big help. So got this here, got it ready. Now the way I'm holding it, if you'll notice, I don't hold it like this or try to do it like that. You might see all oh, people have all kinds of crazy ways that they're trying to do it, have no control. Um, and actually if you learn to control the brush, you won't have to use as much tape to cut in. Um, so now as you can see the way I hold it, I've got my thumb on this side. Um, right-handed if you're left-handed just be the other side so right-handed I got it right here I've got it cupped basically almost like a pencil and I've got my index finger here on the top and my other three fingers just here kind of guiding it so what that allows me to do is that allows me gives me a lot of control gives me a lot of control as you can see right here I can turn it I can turn it back up this way trying to get into a corner whatever I'm trying to do I have a lot of control and I do when I a little more paint. Also, if you hear it kind of, kind of rough, it means you need that you need to load your brush. You don't ever want too much paint, but you can see how I have a lot of control here. A lot of control. I can do it this way, that way. Still have to watch what you're doing. Don't want to get all over it, everything. So that's pretty much how we do that. How how we hold the paint can, load the brush. And then also how, how to hold it to get a lot of good control over it. Um, now, I did kind of a light cut in with, with some of the gloss. I didn't want to get too much on my wall because uh, I will be actually getting a good cut in, a uh, nice smooth cut in when I put my paint on there. Right now, it's just uh, a, a couple of coats of primer. Um, so next time, what I'll be talking about um, is some things that you can do so that you can do a good cut line without having to use quite so much tape. Um, some people use tape, some people don't. Um, most of the time I don't use a lot of tape. And so I'm going to show you how to do that um, and hopefully do it well. So it does take a bit of practice, but practice a bit and you could definitely learn how. So that's what we get into next time is how to make a good cut line free-handed. Um, now, EndersonMountainViewFarms.com. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.